Welcome back to That Talking Thing. I'm Kim. I'm Jason. Uh, we have episode 11, season two, with some business topics. The first one is about giving your team some space, specifically not jumping in into conversations that are happening. So either on Zoom meetings, we work remotely, or in our Slack channels, if people are talking about something, I found, like, I have an opinion. Or I'm like, or someone asks a question, and they're like, what do you think, what should we be doing? And I'm like, of course, I have an opinion on this. I try now with, you know, a team of 15 to 18 and, um, you know, more managers as well. Like, I'll, I don't have to jump in early. I have to give them some space to figure it out. There's someone else on the team who also has an opinion. And at least half the time, like someone else is like, great job. Someone else says it, you know? And then I get, get a moment of like, I can encourage, like, that was a good idea. Like either behind the scenes or in the moment, like, you know, like that's a good idea Andrew has, which is the same idea I would have suggested. And it's almost like it's better. It comes from someone else. So it's hard to keep that in mind, but that's almost something like I write on a note for meetings and, um, I've, I've been experiencing, I, I think I'm proactively doing this also, trying to let conversations happen before I jump in, because I know as an owner, once I respond right. and comment, everyone else's comments are sh yeah. shaded by what I've said. Um, but the problem is lately I've seen conversations that I hold back from go down a path <laughs> that needs major correction either yeah. because it doesn't align with our goals, with our vision, with our core values, mm -hmm. uh, with, with things I know that are happening in other teams. And, and these conversations go too far. Yeah. And before stepping in, they've gotten to a place where it's very much off the rails. Like and, they're excited and, about a new feature. They're like, yeah. we should totally do that. Let's do that. Let's pitch it. Do it. This feature is going to be awesome. And then like, meanwhile, what, like, you know. And you get to a point and that conversation has gotten so far, like a Slack channel specifically it doesn't happen in video call mm. as often because i wouldn't let it go that far i wouldn't let people okay. yeah falsely believe that their idea was great and and they all got together and went right. pretty far and i would just sit there with my eyes rolling um but it has happened in the slack conversation mm -hmm. i come to later yeah and it's very hard to is that like a hold on everyone actually no and not just yeah. sound like a complete ass. It is, it's like, that, just like with kids, it's like, this is a learning opportunity. <laughs> and like, in run. Do you think we should use that like? <laughs> Maybe don't say that, but you say it to yourself. You're like, oh, this is like, this isn't like a problem. This is a learning opportunity. And we are in the process we talked about before about, you know, sharing the core values with the team. And so if it is, that's the issue is, is kind of like, hey, like our core value, you can talk from that angle or. Man, a lot of the time it's like, we've tried this or we thought about this or like we were doing this or we looked into that, you know, it's like new people are coming on the team. They don't know the history and it's like, this is a great idea. And you're like, we tested that and it didn't work, you know, and so it's like weird if it gets really far. I uh, found myself even in like conversations you're not in saying, you know, when Jason gets involved in this, <laughs> we should use different language or we should talk about it in a different way or... Uh -huh. This is something that I, I know that Jason will have a, a strong opinion about. Yeah. I've said things like that. So yeah. before you go further, we should make sure that Jason has a, gets involved in this conversation. Uh, yeah. Not throwing you under the bus, but just saying, I don't want to parrot your words and make the decisions on your behalf or, or share your opinion yeah. to them. But I, I've been yeah, in, okay. especially the new feature type conversations where I know this is something Jason has been involved in, has an opinion about. And before you move forward with anything else, get him in, in this conversation. Yeah. I feel like I'm doing the same thing for you, but also others on the team. Like, oh, like I know David has an opinion about this. Let's right. bring him into this conversation or let's make sure we talk to him about this or, you know, Kim had some thoughts on this. Let's, you know, CC and tag you. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I guess, I don't know. Yeah. It's good. I don't know. Maybe it's good to. Yeah, like people, it's weird. Like I feel, I had, this is related to something else that was going on in the business where we're bringing on a managers, restructuring people, giving them different roles and stuff. And um, I feel a little out of touch. And so like conversations are going on 
that I kind of haven't been able to, like I, I was talking to one employee and they talked about how they had a conversation with someone else. And I was like, oh, that's odd. And, um, and I, about kind of that kind of thing of like, here's a conversation that like is, I don't know, like I hate project management tools. So I think, you know, like a lot of times you change your project management tool and it's like, great. Now you're documenting the fact that you're not getting anything done. Like it doesn't actually help you get done. Like there's like a deeper issue and it's, so it's kind of like when, if people say like, that's like the problem or whatever, oh, that's an example. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, oh, like you said, like, I know Jason has a strong opinion about this. Right. And it's, um, how do I, yeah, how it's weird that like, I feel like I gotta have conversations with them, but it's, it's what, oh, but I feel like what I was gonna say is I feel like, um, stopping people from having ideas. Like I, when we were talking about pitching, someone pitched something early and we're like, we're not actually writing up the whole pitch, just ideas now. And I'm like, it, in some ways a pitch is like brainstorming and I, sharing ideas. And it's like, why am I being so authoritarian about like, you can, you're not allowed to have ideas unless you talk <laughs> to me first. Like, I kind of want to encourage, I just, so that's the challenge I have is like, how do I encourage folks to like have ideas? Like, I don't want to, you know, maybe it's a good idea. A lot of times it's a good idea, you know, but still have the communication going on so that like people aren't steered off track. Um, and we have people like, is it really a problem? Or maybe they know more than you. I'm like, I'm not so sure. Like, it really feels like it's kind of affecting productivity when people are spending too much time kind of going down a path. And then it just feels bad. Like you said, like when you say like, no, we're actually not, I know you spent like a week thinking about that, but we're not going to do it. Right. And you're like, I wish I talked to you on Monday and like kind of steered you in the direction of the version that's, you know, more acceptable. I think as we grow, that's going to be one of the biggest new things that we both refine as leaders, as bosses. Mm -hmm. And I think to this point, we've been small enough that we haven't had to right. be uninvolved in every small thing. Uh, I'm in a mastermind in, and a person had read a book and the gist of the book, she said, don't read the book, but just the gist was be a boss. So if you are the boss, be the boss. Uh, and use that yeah. as a decision making as and and don't um sugarcoat it, don't right. tiptoe around it. I think to this point we haven't been bossy bosses, but we haven't been like declarative, specific, strong, harsh, high standards type people mm -hmm. because we are kind we are human and that's a core value of ours. Everyone is human. But I think as you grow there, that changes to a point and to see yourself as a boss and make a yeah. comment that say, we can't do that because X, we've considered doing that in the past, but X and not feel sensitive about it, not right. feel sad yeah. about it, not rewrite your Slack message 10 times to make it sound more <laughs> kind. Um, yeah. Maybe that's a female thing and maybe not something you need to hear. But for me, oh, but I, feel like, I use yeah. qualifiers yeah. like mm, yeah. just and maybe when I mean no, now, this. Yeah. And I, I mean specific things, but I curtail my language with qualifiers yeah. to not sound Sorry. like a boss when maybe it's okay. It will make us more productive and more aligned in the long run because we are tiptoeing yeah. around yeah. a specific verdict I think on a decision. good employees, they want to know what to do and they want to be, you know, course corrected like that. And, yes. You know, know that, and yeah, that's our job to tell them what to do basically. Um, yeah. But also give that, how do we give them the, flexibility yes. to feel juggle like they control what they, the space you know, to be creative have yeah. ideas yeah and when to step but in it's kind of and, constraints and help creativity so we got kind of provide the constraints and yeah focus on this hmm. you marinate on that i'm gonna okay. introduce our next topic yeah go for it <laughs> <laughs> which is I mean, months ago, you had this idea for a new tagline for Paid Memberships Pro. And what's interesting, it comes out of a competitive research Patrick did where he looked at other membership plugins. And just looking at 
the descriptive one-liner, the what they call themselves, how they describe themselves in the fewest number of words, he found that none of the us and our competitors relatively had the same tagline, the same core message. They're all kind of similar. Ours is the most complete membership platform. So we consider ourselves complete. Someone considered themselves customizable, which we also use that word. Someone said they're the most powerful. But relatively speaking, these are all yeah. very similar. And I remembered months ago, you had this concept of a tagline, the membership platform that grows with you, mm -hmm. that it could address levels of your business as you were in the startup phase, in this kind of teenager phase, in this late stage membership site. Do you still like that tagline? And how could, yeah. what would a powerful tagline prove or change if you did an A-B test? Yeah. I remember when Patrick brought that up, I was kind of like, we came up with that first. I was like, I was looking, I was like, oh, that's odd. You I was like, say that. I was like, I'm pretty sure like we've been the most complete membership plugin since like 2013 and like they must have copied us. So like, why should I change my name? Like, um, but. Cease and desist <laughs> on your bullshit tagline, y'all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we're, but we're actually the best. <laughs> so I had a little bit of that. Um, so I was like, I don't think the tagline has to be different just because it's all the same, but it, it was a good observation to make. Like, hey, it, because that, hey, if everyone's angling for the same space, maybe we can, you know, kind of uh, market ourselves in a different way to, you know, to right. go around what everyone else is doing. It's good and fresh. Um, and then, yeah, the, the idea for the tagline of the membership platform that grows with you, something like that, came about when one of the hosted membership platforms like raise their fees from like 10% to 12% and everyone's like, I'm done, I'm leaving. I want to go to like, you know, something that doesn't have built-in fees like that. Um, and so we were like, oh, should we like really quick, like try to get, you know, whatever it was, Patreon, memberful. The reason that customers. Uh, those, those fees means that the more you grow, the more you pay. Right, yeah. So it's, it's um, for us, you play, pay a flat fee annually yeah. And there's no per member fee. So there's no Im impediment to your growth. Like there's no yeah. limit. We don't make more money if you're right. successful. You don't spend more money if you're successful. If there's a 10% fee, that's great for the site that's making $1,000. It's $100 for a website for a year. That's a really good deal. But then when that membership grows to $100,000, they get $10,000 for basically- a ton of money. The same. Like a similar kind of service. So- People, yeah, people were doing that math, and then it's kind of a problem for that business because then they they lose their big customers, and they usually give them sweetheart deals to stick around. So it's like a weird thing. So people were talking about that, and I was like, oh, like we could address that. Like we like our our plugin really is one that will grow with you because you can use it for free. You don't even have to pay, um, and you know there is no fee structure like that that's going to hurt you when you grow up. And you, you know it's kind of a flat fee. You pay for support and updates for things if you want it. Um, and then like WordPress scales, if people come to us and they're like, how do you scale? Do you address scaling? And it's like the same issues you have scaling any website, like scales, this membership site. Um, and we try to do more with that. Um, but yeah, so that I was like, oh, that could be a tagline. But I also think about taglines, like the best taglines are crazy simple and just say what it is. Like <laughs> there's a tendency to get flashy with it and like poetic. And it's like, no, it's a membership plugin for WordPress. Like, like, um, at least or what I mean, more specific, specific is charge a recurring payment to access yeah. your content or yeah, that, that explains what it does. Cause I mean, maybe, maybe we can like learn about taglines and tagline philosophy. Cause there's also kind of like, just do it. Is that the tagline that doesn't say anything about sneakers? Um, but it's like about like the mission and the lifestyle. And and that's why it's important. But I feel like the tagline we're talking about, which is like, I see the logo, they're called Paid Memberships Pro. And then it says, what does it do? Like, I think you want to be like really simple and straightforward. Um, and I've, I've seen other marketers kind of correct in this where they, it could be like a weird flowery version. And he's like, you're basically, you know, whatever it is. Um, you know, you're a membership plugin for WordPress. Why don't just say that, you know, like that answers a lot of questions about what you do. Um, but maybe there's a better way to answer. So I feel like 
even though I came up with the membership plug in the gross with you, I was, I, I don't know it's actually a better tagline, but we should A-B test it because maybe it kind of, that message lands more. There's like a, another marketing idea of, you know, can you, like, what's the biggest um, challenge or complaint that people would have and right. just answer it as soon as possible. Like, I know you're worried about this, but, you know, like you're worried it's not going to grow with you. This is the membership plugin that grows with you. Um, I, I don't know that that's the best thing, but we could test different taglines and figure I guess out by, if I had to answer first. that, what would most people say? I, I think most people coming to our site have very little website building experience. Yeah. So their insecurity is whether they can even do it. Like they, they don't believe that they can uh, launch, that yeah. they can produce something worth paying for, even if they have great content. I think they believe mm -hmm. it may be impossible. Yeah. To, because of their own skills. I think they believe it won't be as straightforward to like, create. Can I do it. So like a tagline, like you can do it too. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Or like, I don't know, the membership plan that allows you to something like focus on them. Mm -hmm. hmm. I think like knowing more about who that person is, who's right. reading it helps. Cause then like, do people know what WordPress is or not? Do they know what a plugin is or not? Do they know like yep. membership, those membership words are in? Word? Yeah. And so that kind of kicks, you know, it's really, oh, well, we should really be focused on which we are is kind of figuring out, you know, individual customers and how do we kind of address them individually? Um, you know, different segments. Yeah. And it's related to that. I think of we, you know, how, yeah, is if that's the biggest challenge is people don't think they can do it. And we talked before about like, we want to lean into that and be like, we're going right. to help you. We're here. To, I, it is hard, but we're here to help you. Um, so if we changed hmm. the tagline on the homepage, this is hard, but the homepage CTA. <laughs> but yeah. We it, just want click throughs to the pricing page to the view plans and pricing page. So would that be yeah, how we need be test? If yeah. The tagline like it, was working. Yeah. Change the tagline and then see, I mean, which basically like sales is the metric yep. you want to go for. So like people who see each tagline, does it affect sales? Or if there's not enough kind of data for that, um, you know, then like who clicks through to the pricing page is a good, um, if the convert, when we can test the conversions from pricing page to sales, so we can kind of make an estimate. Um, yeah. How do we know which one's better? I mean, at the end of the day, that's what we want is kind of sales. So we're users sometimes, you know, so which one gets more people to install the plugin is kind of the one that we should use. I know we're talking about A-B testing, so it's cool hmm. to talk about. Yeah. I guess every A-B test you run, you have to know what you're maximizing for <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah that's the thing we ran into was like we were writing up so we were thinking about a b testing this in a bunch of stuff and setting up like a routine for like let's always be a p testing yeah. we had like a big change to our plans and pricing and we made good decisions on things but um and some of that too is like let's a b test we're like, we already a b tested that and then we found out but maybe it's time maybe things have changed um but yeah, we find like, we're like, hey, we should maximize for revenue. But we're like, oh, is that actually the goal? Maybe we should maximize for, you know, market share mm -hmm. for users. Let's trust that 10%, 5 to 10% of free users upgrade and just try to get free users um, or, you know, to be with money. That's an interesting thing to, That's maybe another topic. to put in our tagline is that it's free. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that was what I was thinking about too, is like how, how important freemium is. Yep. It's another topic. More. Not <laughs> so for we gotta today. Go. Hey, let's let's just go to the next podcast. Let's record. No, no, okay. we gotta cut it off. We gotta say goodbye. Awkwardly. Teasers. <laughs> All right, it's next right. time when we talk about freemium and yeah. testing. Is that next time? All right, cool. Thanks. Sure.